Hello everyone, good afternoon, welcome to iBrox. Uh, I'm Joshua Barrick here, as you can see on the ticker below, the Ranger review ahead of Rangers versus Kilmarnock in the Scottish Premiership. It is Rangers first game of the Premiership season um, at iBrox at home, obviously after their win against uh, Livingston last week. They've had a slightly tricky night in Europe since then, a, a 2-0 defeat away in Belgium against Union. Um, so I, I think the, the need for today is to really kickstart their season, to give a performance that, that provokes a bit of optimism. You know, obviously the Livingston game was a good comeback. It's a difficult place uh, to go to. The halftime changes worked. But I think what supporters will want to see at this stage of the season uh, and what everyone will be looking for, whether that be uh, people like us covering it, uh, the manager, people support is coming to watch it. They want something to, to get excited, to buy into, to, to see the vision of what the season is going to be. So um, today against Kilmarnock certainly offers an opportunity. It's going to be a difficult one because we know what it's like with Derek McInnes brings his teams to Tybrox. He's got a lot of uh, experience of doing that with his Aberdeen team. Um, I'm sure it will be uh, another tricky test to break them down today, but Rangers should be winning this type of game um, with their resources, absolutely. And they need to have a good tempo to start with. That's what I think Kevin will be looking for. Uh, good afternoon to Pete, the uh, regular viewer of the show who gets in touch. Right, I'm going to take everyone through the team. Do let me know if you've got any questions. Pop them in the chat box below. We'll be live after the game uh, as well, taking you through what's hopefully been a positive afternoon at Ibrox. Starting with Rangers, um, we've got John McLaughlin, although the team sheet has got a Sunday name, Jonathan McLaughlin in goals, James Tavernier at right back, uh, a centre-back pairing of Connor Goldson and James Sands, uh, slightly I, I guess maybe not too much of a surprise given Sands has played over the last couple of weeks. I certainly predicted that Ben Davis would start with the view of him starting in Europe as well on Tuesday, but maybe the fact that he uh, is not starting today is a sign that he also won't start on Tuesday uh, when he will visit Ibrox. Left back, Ritvan Yilmaz. Uh, that's a, I think an exciting thing as well as the return of Alfredo Morelos on the bench for everyone uh, to get behind today. Yilmaz, obviously the Turkish international 21-year-old left back who's coming to the club from Besiktas. It would be really interesting to get to see him today making his full debut. Um, a centre midfield pairing, we'll come to that because it is a pairing, it's not one midfielder, Stephen Davis and John Lundstrom. I presume it will be Tom Lawrence on the left, Scott right from the right and um, we have Malik Tillman just behind Antonio Cholak up front on the bench. McGregor, Jack Matondo, Kamara Morelos, Davies, then Davies, not Davies, Barisic, Arfield and Keg. For Kilmarnock, we go with Walker, um, Jerry Old, Dorset, Alan Power, Ash Taylor, Rory McKenzie, Molly Shaw, Fraser Murray, Joe Wright, Liam Donnelly, uh, Ali Boso and Kyle Lafferty, obviously uh, well known around these parts up top. On the bench, Woods, Armstrong, Hodgson, Sanders, Lyons, uh, Waters, McEnroy, Cameron and Hallworth. So we'll get to a few questions in a moment. Just a few of the top line issues. Obviously, no Ryan Kent in the squad today. Um, we'll be seeking clarity on what the situation there is in the, the post-match press conference. Get to ask the manager if he will be around for, for Tuesday. Obviously, the fact that he's not involved today suggests that either he's been kept to be completely fit for that point. You know, he's had his full pre-season. I don't think it'll be a case of match sharpness of Kent. Uh, obviously, I think they'll not want to aggravate the injury. It didn't sound serious because there was a chance he could have made Tuesday. Um, I think there was an expectation he could also make the weekend as well. So we'll uh, seek some clarity uh, as to whether that's just simply a delay um, in, in, in Kent coming back or whether uh, something more serious that might come out, keep him out of Tuesday. Two central lying midfielders. Let us know what you think about that in the comments. Lab Broncos has favoured this 4 2 3 1 throughout pre season. You'll see today, I'm sure, the two number sixes come back and help build playing go forwards. Contrary to belief, I don't think that's a terrible decision. You know, you remember the 55 season with Davis and Kamara where Rangers were absolutely relentless. They played two, you know, holding midfielders and that. Uh, system, but it was very attacking. I um, understand that Rangers went, went ahead in a lot of games, whereas at the moment their, their start certainly over the last quarter of the season haven't been electric to say the least. So be intrigued to see um, how that plays out. Disappointed that maybe Rabi Matondo isn't starting because I thought he had a difficult night in Belgium, but you know, only games are really going to acclimatise him to the demands of, of Scottish football. Scott Wright again in there um, on an opportunity for him. We'll see if he can uh, provide um, in the final third today. Malik Tillman getting his first start uh, at Ibrox, first start in, in, in the league, and as I say, likely to see Tom Lawrence off the bench. The big news, of course, is Alfredo Morelos um, is on the bench as well. So we're going to get through 
some of the comments here um, and uh, answer some of the comments in regards to the team news. Sorry, some of them was just distracting me on my screen there. Alan gets in touch to say, are they taking no risks with Kent and leaving them for Tuesday? Just address that there, Alan, as I'm sure um, you, you were seeing. Uh, we'll see clarity now after the game. That's kind of my inkling because, as you say, I thought he was supposed to be back for today as well. Um, but we will we'll see what happens with them after post match. We'll get an update, and it is good to see Davis and Neil Maz start. I think the fact that Neil Maz is starting, that Morelos is back, will naturally give a bit of a lift, something new. And um, the fact you've got Lawrence and Tillman is there as well should provide a good goal threat. Just as Kilmarnock come out in front of me, um, so we'll be seeing uh, see what happens there. RFC uh, 56, sorry, good friend of the show, gets in touch to say I would be playing Sands as centre back against a decent striker. Yeah, it's going to be interesting uh, to see how Sands does against the physical striker. Kyle that's certainly one area that I've kind of, um, I would say he's not convinced yet in that physical battle. In saying that, when he came on against Nubli at Livingston, I thought Sands did a good job, but Nubli plays 70 minutes by then. It's different to when you're playing a whole 90 minutes, I guess, against uh, a physical uh, striker. James Strachan, another good friend of the show. Good afternoon to you, James. Gets in touch to say hopefully we get to back to our attacking aggressive ways today. Good agree more, James. It's so important the Rangers start with a good intensity that they don't allow for morning to get through the first 20 minutes without conceding, allow them to quiet the crowd and um, get frustrate the crowd. I think it's so important that Rangers do, um, even if they don't get an early goal, which should obviously be, uh, be preferable, that they, um, that they start with intensity and, and, and that will be, I'm sure, matched uh, by the crowd. Um, no Sakal on the bench, as Alan says. Sorry, that music's very loud. I hope you can still hear me. That is again something that I'm sure will be brought up in the post match press conference, Alan, because Sakal obviously hasn't played much. Well. Just come out here, played by James here. Um, Sakal obviously hasn't played much. Well. Just hoping that music might go down ever so slightly um, because the Rangers are coming out, as I say, uh, in front of me there. Um, Kelvin coming out last. Uh, Robert getting in touch, you know, I think it's a chance to give McGregor a chance straight away and there's a rumours of Rangers wanting another keeper, Josh Rome. I'd be very surprised that Rangers do another goalkeeper and purely because they've got Al McGregor here for another year and John McLaughlin as well signed a new two-year contract last season, so I'd be very surprised if that's the case. I thought McLaughlin, he could have probably done a little bit better for the goal um, away in Belgium, but also probably made a couple of good saves. For me, the season will probably naturally be peppered by this conversation you've got John McLaughlin who allows Rangers to play in a certain way because he's good at the ball with his feet, I don't think anyone would say he's a better shot stopper than Al McGregor, even now with McGregor's at the end of his career, and equally with McGregor there was clear, in my opinion, areas of his game last season that were targeted by the opposition in terms of the ball coming into the box, contesting high balls, I don't think he can play out allow Rangers to play out in the same way that McLaughlin can so you've not got the whole package in either until we've lost him, maybe has a run in the team and it shows he can't be the number one. Therefore, let's come back to how I would be very surprised um, if, if Robert Rangers move for another goalkeeper uh, before the end. So Little Davis gets in touch to say, Davis is a metronome, great, he's getting the game, yeah. Davis still, Rangers still kind of relying on Sturry Seven and Stephen Davis. It's one way to look at it. The alternative is that on Scott Arfield's goals, the impact team can still have last season, uh, last um, Last week, sorry, against them, and hopefully Davis can probably do the same again today, but definitely this last week has shown the need that all over social media people are saying we need a creative team by the builder. Um, I'm sure when Rangers agreed to, or when Stephen Davis agreed to his contract extension, that kind of hole was one was not to be filled because Davis will still be on decent wages, he'll still be expected to play some amount of minutes, and he gives you that, but I, I absolutely agree that that is an area that Rangers need to spend money. Um, I don't think it'll be maybe if we get into the Champions League we'll have to bet. Um, but you can see definitely in the week that there was a lack of that. Particularly when, in my opinion, you've got your best midfield in John Lundstrom in defence. Uh, that is, um, you're certainly going to, I can, I guess, feel the like, lack uh, of learn that situation. So, yeah, but my other good friend of the show, bench very defensive team. So, Cal, question mark. Yes, Cal is one that I'm sure will be brought up in the post-match uh, press conference, CGM. Um, some options from the bench, I guess you can say Matondo and Varelos, uh, Arfield, we all saw his, his uh, impact, his runs we have in the penalty box um, last week, but until everyone's a bit, they're right, you are still looking at the bench, and, and it was the same last week away in Livingston, where you think it's it kind of is that, it, is that everyone. Um, but, as I say, when, when everyone is back, there will be a situation where, apart from that deep line, the field 
the key areas have been addressed. But it's, listen, it's all dependent on results. You've got a big day for Antonio Cholak. Um, your eyeballs today does pretty convinced you would say in a short Rangers career up to this point, and he'll be put under a lot of pressure, I'm sure, by um, Alfredo Morelos coming back into the squad today. Ravi Matondo as well, someone at the start of his Rangers career who probably needs a few games to convince him to show he can do, even though he had a break for the season. So, lots to learn today, I'm sure. Um, be back after the game, after the press conference, probably about about half past five. So do turn your notifications on so you get notified when that happens. Until then, enjoy the game if you're watching. Enjoy it if you're at high rocks. We'll speak to you after the press conference. Hopefully, uh, and enjoy the afternoon.